I bought Conan Exiles about a year ago when it was released for a few reasons. First reason is because I'm a big fan of everything Conan related. I've read the complete Chronicles of Conan at least three times by now, and I've of course seen all the movies as well. The second reason is I'm just a big fan of these survival games. But the final and most important reason is the promise of sorcery and necromancy that Funcom made. It is no surprise to me that Funcom would want to put necromancy into Conan Exiles. Funcom did a nice job at necromancy in their MMORPG, Age of Conan. Not many MMORPGs implement necromancy, but they pull it off quite well there, so kudos to them for that. I've got a video plan for the necromancy in Age of Conan too, but today I want to cover the promise of necromancy in Conan Exiles. Now before I begin to discuss this, I'd like to mention that most of this is speculation. We don't fully know how or when sorcery and necromancy will be implemented, but there's enough information floating around in the internet to piece something together. I've put the links to all my sources in the description so you can see and hear for yourself if you wish. According to the developer video, they specifically mention that you'll be able to have skeleton minions. Incredibly exciting. To quote the developer, you will be able to replace your human thralls with skeletal thralls. You'll be able to kill things, bring them back from the dead, and make their skeletons go to work for you. So this is the official word, and this makes me really, really excited, as you can probably imagine. Just to be super clear on this, the game currently has no necromancy. Necromancy has just been promised. Please wait for the game to release in May 8th, 2018. I'll make a video either praising and reviewing the necromancy, or a video being upset with Funcom for not including it. So if you don't already have the game, I'd recommend just waiting another few weeks until I can confirm the necromancy. According to the developer, the sorcery system will be fueled by corruption. All across the Conan Exiles world there are traces of a now extinct empire of some kind. The remnants of this lost empire exist as foreboding alien structures they left behind. There's these big aqueducts and multiple dark temples and ruined dark cities sinking in the sands of the desert. In the north there's also a huge black wall separating the desert from the more fertile northern lands. All of the architecture shares the same style as made from some kind of dark stone. Most of these ruins are corrupted and when you enter these ruins you'll begin to accumulate corruption. For every point of corruption you have, your maximum health and stamina will be reduced. Last I checked, the maximum corruption you could attain is 50%. When sorcery does arrive, the more corrupt your character is, the more potent your sorcery should become. The corruption is a sacrifice the player will have to choose in order to attain sorcery. The most exciting thing about the magic in the Conan universe is that the magic tends to be a subtle force. This is because Conan is a low fantasy setting. What magic exists in the Conan universe tends to be less overt and more prepared and ritualistic. Fireball throwing isn't really a thing, but curses and summoning are often featured in the Conan books. Here's a few examples from the complete Chronicles of Conan. I'll try not to spoil the stories, but I'll just extract the needed quotes or sentences to support the types of sorcery that are canon, so to speak. Of all the Conan stories, the People of the Black Circle short story probably features the most sorcery. The King of Vendia finds himself under a remote attack from a group of sorcerers known as the Black Seers of Yimsha. A man with some affiliation to these sorcerers reveals some interesting info about this magical attack when questioned by the man who hired them. What I cannot understand is why I have had to wait so long for your masters to strike. If they have slain the king now, why could they have not slain him months ago? To which the affiliate responds, Even the arts you call sorcery are governed by cosmic laws. The stars direct these actions, as in other affairs. Not even my masters can alter the stars. Not until the heavens were in proper order could they perform this necromancy. He goes on to reveal that in order to perform this magical attack, the sorcerers required some organic matter from the king of Vendia in order to target him and were able to obtain this by stealing a lock of his hair that was foolishly provided by one of his lovers. 
they were able to steal the hair by swapping it out with a substitute without her realizing, and thus the sorcery was able to take place. The nature of this sorcery is that wizards are attempting to snap his silver cord of life that binds him to his body. Once snapped, they would plant his soul inside a demon they had summoned and damn him for eternity. So what you can gather from this is that necromancy, magic that controls life and death, is being used here. It is even explicitly called necromancy by the author Robert E. Howard. What's also being used here is some kind of demon summoning, as evidenced by this quote from the King of Vendia while talking to his sister. They drew my soul out of my body and far away into a stone room. There they strove to break the silver cord of life and thrust my soul into the body of a foul night weird that the sorcery summoned up from hell. This is certainly a canonical proof that both necromancy and demon summoning exist in the Conan universe. Let's look at some other types of magic evidenced by the canonical sources. In that same short story, The People of the Black Circle, evidence of another type of magic is provided, hypnotism. A renegade member of the Black Seers of Yimsha is able to charm people should they gaze into his eyes. Here's the relevant passage. A man sat cross-legged on a low ledge beside the path, a man in a camel hair robe and a green turban. The Wazuli's mouth gaped for a yell and his hand leapt to his knife hilt. But at that instant his eyes met those of a stranger, and the cry died in his throat, his fingers went limp. He stood like a statue, his own eyes glazed and vacant. For minutes the scene held motionless. Then the man on the low ledge drew a cryptic symbol in the dust on the rock with his forefinger. The Wazuli did not see him place anything within the compass of that emblem, but presently something gleamed there, a round, shiny, black ball that looked like polished jade. The man in the green turban took this up and tossed it to the Wazuli, who mechanically caught it. Carry this to Yar Afsal, he said and the Wazuli turned like an automaton and went back along the path, holding the black jade ball in his outstretched hand. He did not even turn his head to the renewed jeers of the women as he passed the huts. He did not seem to hear. This Wazuli then brings this to Yar Afsal, the chief of Kurum, where the jade ball transforms into a poisonous spider and kills him. This jade ball is called the Globe of Yedzud, and is also some kind of magic. Upon taking the globe of Yetsud from the charmed Wazuli man, the following passage ensues. In his right hand, moving towards his girdle, he suddenly felt movement where movement should not be. His voice died away as he stood and glared at nothing, and inside his clenched right hand he felt the quivering of change, of motion, of life. He no longer held a smooth shining sphere in his hands, and he dared not look. His tongue clove to the roof of his mouth, and he could not open his hand. His astonished warriors saw Yar Afsal's eyes distend. The colour ebbed from his face. Then suddenly, a bellow of agony burst from his bearded lips. He swayed and fell as if struck by lightning, his right arm tossed out in front of him. Face down he lay and from between his opening fingers crawled a spider, a hideous, black, hairy-legged monster whose body shone like black jade. So canonically, we can expect necromancy, summoning, hypnotism, and cursed objects. Another interesting tidbit about the hypnotism is that it does not work on everyone, as the renegade seer finds out when he attempts to hypnotize a Sumerian. Kemp's sorcery was based on hypnotism, as is the case of most Eastern magic. The way has been prepared for the hypnotist for untold centuries of generations who have lived and died in the firm conviction of the reality and power of hypnotism, building up, by mass force and practice, a colossal though intangible atmosphere against which the individual, steeped in the traditions of the land, finds himself helpless. But Conan was not a son of the East, its traditions were meaningless to him. He was the product of an utterly alien atmosphere. Hypnotism was not even a myth in Sumeria. 
The heritage that prepared the native of the East for submission to the mesmerist was not his. I don't know whether the game would acknowledge this. I think it could be an interesting mechanic if certain races in Conan Exiles were immune or resistant to different kinds of magic. Strength enhancing magic is further evidenced by the same short story. After the hypnotism on the Sumerian fails, the renegade seer sidesteps him and slaps him with incredible might. To Yasmina, it seemed that Kemsa had merely brushed his open palm lightly against Conan's bull neck, but the Sumerian went down like a slain ox. Transportation magic is further evidenced by this same short story. The wizards are able to move around as a wisp of crimson cloud. The crimson cloud balanced like a spinning top for an instant, whirling in a dazzling sheen on its point. Then without warning it was gone, vanished as a bubble vanishes when burst. There on the ledge stood four men. Further evidence of mastery over demons is revealed by the master of the Black Seers of Yimsha when he is accused of being a devil. I was born on this planet long ago. Once I was a common man, nor have I lost all my human attributes in the numberless eons of my adeptship. A human steeped in the dark arts is greater than a devil. I am of human origin, but I rule demons. So from this story alone, we can without a doubt expect some very awesome kind of magic. More direct combat magic is covered as soldiers attempt to storm the spires of the Black Seers. But the next attack came swiftly. They all saw it. A white puffball of smoke that tumbled over the tower rim and came drifting and rolling down the slope towards them. Others followed it. They seemed harmless, mere woolly globes of cloudy foam. But Conan stepped aside to avoid contact with the first. Behind him, one of the Iraksai reached out and thrust his sword into the unstable mass. Instantly, a sharp report shook the mountainside. There was a burst of blinding flame, and then the puffball had vanished, and the too curious warrior remained only a heap of charred and blackened bones. Magic seems to be powerful in Conan, but certainly limited and requires preparation. It's hard to know, for me at least, whether the puffballs are alchemical attacks or magical ones spawned from thin air. But they do run out because after expending their puffball clouds, the seer apprentices were forced to fight conventionally. I bet they're supposed to be alchemical attacks though. Conan Exiles has already implemented snake arrows. They can be crafted at a crafting bench from branches by worshippers of Set. This is probably inspired more by the movie than the literature. In the Conan the Barbarian movie with Arnold Schwarzenegger, Falsa Doom takes a writhing snake from his pocket and coerces it into being rigid before shooting it. This scene in the movie was probably inspired by part of the people of this black circle again, when a warrior shoots an arrow at a black seer and the seer throws it back at the archer, and when the archer catches it, it becomes a snake in his hands. He lifted his head and saw, on the tier above him, a tall, black, robed figure, naked head nodding slightly as he stared down. His whole attitude suggested mockery and malignity. Quick as a flash, the Iraksai bent his bow and loosed, and the arrow streaked upward to strike full in the black-robed breast. The mocking smile did not alter. The seer plucked out the missile and threw it back at the bowman. Not as a weapon is hurled, but with a contemptuous gesture. The Iraksai dodged, instinctively throwing up his arm. His fingers closed on the revolving shaft, then he shrieked. In his hand, the wooden shaft suddenly writhed. Its rigid outline became pliant, melting into his grasp. He tried to throw it from him, but it was too late. He held a living serpent in his naked hand. Shapeshifting is also featured in the story. The master of the Black Seers transforms himself into a giant serpent. This is probably what inspired Falsa Doom's transformation in the Conan movie. There are even more extreme and powerful examples of magic in this short story. Feats probably too powerful for a player character in a game to be able to pull off. In any case, we can expect to see summoning at the very least. Of all the magic in Conan literature, demon summoning shows up most frequently and across multiple stories.
Another story where demon summoning appears is in A Witch Shall Be Born. The antagonist summons a demon, but other magic is also featured. I get the feeling it's intended to be alchemical in nature, or at least specially prepared magic dust, not something that appears from thin air though. The witch uses a bright flash to blind soldiers, and then they are cut down while blinded by her servants. Later on, this passage says her fire dust has been expended. Valerius whirled on his toes, quick and fierce as a jungle cat, glaring about for Salome. She must have exhausted her fire dust in the prison. She was bending over Tamaris, grasping her sister's black locks in her hand, and the other lifting a dagger. As for the demon the witch summoned, it is described as so. Out of the gloom at the other end of the great hall, a vast dark form heaved up. It came rushing towards him in gigantic frog-like hops. So clearly demons can come in all forms, shapes and sizes, including gigantic frogs. So now that we've covered some of the real Conan source material and sorcery, let's talk again about what we know about the upcoming sorcery in Conan Exiles. We know for sure that necromancy, demon summoning, shape-shifting into demons, and crafting of unique magical items have been said by Funcom to be coming. I'm happy with this, it's a good fit for the Conan universe. The only thing left now is to speculate about the sorcery coming to Conan Exiles, and how I'd hope to see its implementation. First, the ritualistic creation of undead. So to quote Funcom, they said, you will be able to kill things, bring them back from the dead, and make their skeletons go to work for you. This sounds good, but leaves a lot of questions about how exactly this will work. Here's my ideas for what would be cool. I want to be able to engage in rituals to create minions from lesser materials. Conan Exiles already has the items which would be suitable for this. Bones and flesh, even human flesh, can be harvested from corpses. Maybe an altar can be constructed that would work similarly to the existing altars of gods, where I can put in the ingredients and craft a minion. Corruption could be spent in the crafting, meaning that after making a few minions, I'll have to return to the darkness and soak up more corruption so I can continue crafting them. Alternatively, it's already possible to knock NPCs out and drag them away with a rope to a wheel of pain to break their wills and make them submit as a living fra. But what if instead of taking them to a wheel of pain, I took them to a necrotic altar and prepared their still living body for undeath? That seems pretty cool as well. If corruption is to be expended during crafting, it'd be nice to create corruption producing structures for my base so I don't have to keep venturing back into the ruins all the time. Secondly, ritualistic summoning of demons. Demon summoning occurs so frequently in the Conan books that it's definitely got to be implemented in the game. Indeed, the developers confirmed it will be present. It would probably be more focused around sacrifices than crafting, but it could work in a similar way. Gather 500 human hearts, 1000 pieces of human flesh, and with a whole load of corruption summoned forth a demon. Thirdly, shapeshifting. According to Funcom, Shapeshifting into demons is all they've mentioned. That's fine. Shapeshifting is probably not something I'm going to be doing often, but I'm glad it's coming because it's a good fit to the Conan universe. Shapeshifting into snakes would be very canon. Fourthly, crafting of magical items. So all that Funcom has said is that you'll be able to craft magical items. This could be any number of things, but what comes to mind is stuff like magical grenades and Molotov cocktails, basically. Maybe interesting weapons and armor too? It's hard to know what they have in mind. The debuff suffered by the high corruption a sorcerer would have would mean that they couldn't carry much of the time. The preparation fits well into the whole crafting system given by Conan Exiles already. Once depleted, the mage would have to rely on normal attacks like anyone else, but with a heavy disadvantage due to the corruption. So that covers the stuff that Funcom said should be coming to the game. Here's other types of magic that are canon and would fit well into a Conan game. Ritualistic curses and attacks. It'd be extremely cool and interesting if it was possible to curse another player. This would of course be a PvP thing and wouldn't make much sense for PvE. But just like in the People of the Black Circle short story, 
Imagine if you get, could get a few things that belong to an enemy player and then use these things to curse them. Currently there's nothing specifically player owned in the game, but in the future maybe you could find an item that they made and take it and use it to curse them with. Or maybe get a lock of their hair like the seers did to the king of Vendia and remotely debuff or kill that player. There's a lot of potential here for this. Hypnotism and movement based magics. It'd be cool to become a wisp of cloud and travel around like the seers could. It'd also maybe be good to allow a physically weak sorcerer loaded up with tons of corruption to perform a one-off powerful slap to disorient an attacker and make an escape with. This is canonically backed at least. Hypnotism would also be good, but I don't know how it would work. Maybe the sorcerer loses control of himself for the duration of the spell and assumes control of the target causing it to mechanically walk around and attack for a brief time. It could be useful also to make an enemy player jump to his own death in PvP. In conclusion, the sorcerers I want to see in Conan Exiles are preparation-based sorcerers. They might have a nice tower guarded by demons, undead minions and traps and things, but once you've fought through their demons, killed their undead and have expended their magic tricks, they're more helpless than a normal player. This would be fun and fits in well with how magic users have been portrayed so far in the Conan stories.